In this quick tip, we're going to talk about After Effects and dynamic linking. If you're unfamiliar with After Effects or dynamic linking your comps from After Effects to Premiere, I'm going to show you a couple of quick tips and tricks for making that happen in your own projects. So first, let's talk about how to get your footage from Premiere into After Effects. There are a couple of different ways that you can do it. The first is you can simply select your footage from your timeline, like right here, click on a clip, right click, and say replace with After Effects composition. Now I have in my timeline here a little title sequence for a movie called Acorns in the City. These are the acorns and they are in the city. Now I want to take all of these things, the title, the acorns, and the city clip, and send them to After Effects. But I've got this all nicely cut up into Premiere, so before I do it, I'm going to go ahead and grab all of them and duplicate them, holding Option. I'm going to duplicate them up on my timeline, because when I replace them with an After Effects clip, it's going to replace all three of them and flatten them down. So this will make sure that I have a copy of the clips that were previously sent to After Effects in my Premiere timeline. Let me go ahead and right click these three clips and say replace with After Effects composition. Now After Effects was already open, and so what happened is Premiere sent this over and it launched those clips into After Effects for me. You can see here, I have the text, I have the acorns, and I have the city. Now when I hop back to Premiere, you can see I have that linked comp right here in my timeline. It also created a clip in my bin, and just to be organized, I'm going to put that in its own bin here for linked comps. Now, if you have been working in After Effects already, like I have, before I started recording this tutorial, I've already got some clips in here that I did some work on, and I did not bring them in from Premiere. Let me just organize this briefly. And I'm going to show you the two comps that I have. I have one called Drag Me to Premiere, and that's just this clip of this girl walking in a meadow, and I have a lower third name for her, which I will eventually get from the client. And I also have this that says import me into Premiere. That's just some horses, and they also need a lower third as well. So there's two different ways that we can do this. The first is I can simply drag this into Premiere. So I'm going to move After Effects over just a little bit here. I'm going to click on this comp. I'm going to drag it directly into my bin and into my folder. That's going to bring this right into Premiere, and I can drag it from the bin into my timeline here. And look at that. I have a clip that's been dragged from After Effects into Premiere. Now the next thing that I can do is I can import it. I'm going to go to my media browser here, browse to that folder, open up my After Effects project, open up my comps folder, and choose the import one. I'm going to go ahead and take this from media browser, right click, and choose import. That will import it into the bin that I had selected, and I can drag it from the bin into my timeline here. And there we go, we have the horses now. Now a couple of notes about how this process works. So I'm going to hop back to After Effects here. Now I have one more comp in here called Demo Comp 1. Let me open that up for you. Now I just took the Rocket Yard logo here. I did some kind of cool animation, added some grain, some shallow depth of field, a lens flare, and then just a little outro. Now the end of this is pretty nice, it's pretty simple, I can just play it back really quickly. So that renders really fast. However, the beginning, with all of that blurring, the lens flare, and the grain, renders really slowly. In my version of After Effects, I have a tool that tells me how long each layer takes to render. And this layer right here takes a pretty long amount of time. So if I were to bring in this demo comp into Premiere, let me just drag it in. And I'll bring this into my timeline here. This will take a long time to render out if I play it back in Premiere. So it kind of gets stuck there and doesn't keep playing because it can only render so many frames before it had to kind of give up. So what I've done instead is back in After Effects, I've taken this comp and I've sent it to my render queue. I'm going to use a ProRes 422 output, give it an output destination, and then render it out. Once I'm done rendering it out, I've gone ahead and imported it here into Premiere, and I've dragged it into my timeline. Now when I play this back, it plays back nice and smooth. Now here's the cool thing about this. You can actually take this clip, right click on it, and say Edit Original. 
This will open up After Effects and take me back to the original comp in After Effects that was used to create it. You might get this warning, which just says that the item in your render queue that was used to create this footage has been deleted, and that's totally okay. Just click OK, and it will take you back to your comp, right where you left off. Now there's one more quick tip I want to show you about dynamic linking and After Effects. Let me go ahead and make a new comp here, and I know that the graphic that I have to make is going to be a motion graphic, and it's a chart. And I know that in my timeline, it takes five seconds. So now I have a five second comp here with nothing inside of it. And I'll just make a new text layer and I'll just say chart graphics here. This is just so I know what this is. Now I want to bring in some footage from my Premiere sequence. I'm going to tab back over to Premiere. I'm going to grab a clip like this city clip right here, just make a copy of it in the back of my timeline, and make it much longer. Okay, so I have a very long clip of a city, and I want to put this in the background of my chart. So I'm going to go ahead and just select it, right click, and choose copy. Now I'm going to tab back over to After Effects, and I'm going to push Command or Control V for paste. Now you can see that I've actually copied and pasted that original city layer into my comp here. But there's a couple of things to watch out for here. First, it pasted that city at the very spot in time where it was copied from in Premiere. Let me just zoom out of my comp here. Look, it's all the way back here at the 40 second mark. It also made the comp much longer, way longer than the five seconds I originally intended. So I could remember to simply take it from the back of my comp drag it to the beginning, make sure to move it down to the bottom so that my little note is still up here. Then go to that five second mark, push N to trim my comp, and then right click here in the work area and say trim comp to work area. This will make it a five second comp again. But that's a lot of clicks to just do one thing. So let me go ahead and just undo all of that, including the pasting. I'm gonna tab back over to Premiere now here's a trick that I like to use when I have to copy an item from much later in my timeline and paste it into an After Effects comp. So what I do is I select the item in my timeline, right click, choose copy, then I push the home key. I make sure that my track patching is on a track with nothing on it. So like video six here. And then I paste it onto that track, just like that. Now it's at the very beginning of my timeline. Now I go ahead and right click, and choose Cut, or Command or Control X. When I tab back over to After Effects, and I paste it, it will be at the beginning of my comp. But there's nothing I can do about After Effects extending the length of my comp to match the length of the footage. So you do have to remember to go to the end of whatever clip you were using to guide the length of your comp by pushing O, then you can push N, then you can push N to bring the work area to your playhead, and then right click and choose Trim Comp to Work Area. Now one more thing you might be noticing if you're familiar with After Effects here. When I pasted this city clip, it brought it in as a pre-comp. And inside of that pre-comp is the entire clip. Now I don't necessarily want this to be a pre-comp, and it wouldn't be a huge issue to simply go over here, right click, say Reveal Layer Source in Project, find it here in the bin, find the original footage that came in with it, then hold Option or Alt and drag it to replace it. But you can see what happened here is that the pre-comp was scaled to 100%, and when I push S for scale here, this clip is now twice as large. That's because this clip is actually 4K in size, which is much larger than the size of my comp in After Effects. So I'm going to have to scale it down to 50% to fit. Now what if I wanted it to come in at 50%, matching the proper scaling to fit my comp as it does in Premiere. Well, let me go ahead and just undo all of this. I'm gonna undo the pasting of this clip as well. Hop back over to Premiere, then come over to this clip. So if I right click on this clip here, in my Premiere timeline, this clip is set to scale to frame size. There's a lot of reasons why you might or might not use scale to frame size, but that's not for this tutorial. Instead, make sure it's set to set to frame size. Nothing will change in Premiere, but if you come over to your effect controls, you'll see that my scaling is now set to 50%, because this has been scaled down to 50% to fit my Premiere timeline. I'm going to do the exact same thing. 
I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, paste it on a video track six, and then cut it, and then paste it over here in After Effects. I'll go ahead and push O with the text layer selected to go to the end of it, then push N to bring the end of the work area to my playhead, and then right click and choose Trim Comp to Work Area. Now you can see that I have my city clip, and when I push S for scale, it's 50%, and there's only one clip that's been brought in, not a clip and a pre-comp. There's a ton more great information in this article about other little nuances to be paying attention to when working with dynamic links, but as you can see, it's a very powerful tool. And it's amazing to simply come into After Effects here, create something new, like this blue box on top of my city footage, and then drag that comp into my Premiere timeline, hop back into Premiere, put it anywhere in my sequence, and magically we have the clip and the blue box right there. And if I hop back into After Effects, and I decide that blue box should actually be a green box, it's going to turn green for me almost instantly when I return to Premiere. So it's a very powerful tool that you can use in your editing right now between these two programs. Thank you.